Welcome back, fight fans, to another video here on the fight game. The heavyweight division, a division storied with great champions and influential figures. From Joe Lewis to Jack Johnson, from Rocky Marciano to Jack Dempsey, from Ali to Foreman, Holmes to Frazier, Holyfield to Tyson. If you hadn't guessed already, the history of the heavyweight division is one that goes back over a century. The progress of the heavyweight division is an evolution in itself. I know you got him picked, but the man's in trouble. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Anthony Joshua might just be one of the most destructive combination powerhouses we've seen in the recent history of the heavyweight division. He has the aesthetic of a Greek statue, power that demands respect, fundamental skills, and the heart of a lion to go along with it. He's only one of four heavyweight champions in history to hold a win over every opponent he's faced. After his professional debut seven years ago, he's collected 23 victories and one loss, a loss which he avenged. But records are overrated in boxing. Character and a measure of greatness is where true appraisals belong. We've seen Joshua time and time again show the world that he's got the grit and determination to persevere. He's 30 years old, at his absolute peak. He has four world titles in his possession, three of these being recognized as major. Joshua can box and he can punch. Versatility and the ability to adapt your style is an important quality to have at the elite level of boxing. He can box in close, he can box on the outside. He has some incredible wins over some of the top contenders in boxing. No wonder why so many fans around the world love him. So for this video, we're taking a look at the question if Anthony Joshua is the king of the heavyweight division. To entertain this question, we need to compel ourselves to a series of categories. Power, speed, ring IQ, and laudability. Let's begin. First up, power. If the heavyweight division was a country, power would be its capital. When it comes to power, Joshua's one of the best. He's one of the hardest hitting heavyweights we have today. However, it may be right to say that his power isn't on the same level of Deontay Wilder, but it's definitely impressive. He's going hunting, and he's going hunting now. The right hand Eric With 21 knockout victories to his name, he's dropped the likes of Alexander Bovetkin and Vladimir Klitschko. There's typically two types of power in boxing. There's heavy-handed power and one-punch lights-out knockout power. I classify Joshua's power as heavy-handed, where he's the likes of Deontay Wilder's power would be the one-and-done type. Heavy-handed power is destructive. It's the accumulation of strong, powerful blows to the head and body that breaks the opponent down. In his fight versus Dominic Brazil, Joshua implemented his power over the course of numerous rounds. He showed that he was able to remain calm and collected as Brazil absorbed more and more punishment. Brazil was just as big as Joshua, and Joshua's power combined with good skill was what enabled Joshua to eventually knock Brazil out in round 7. However, he can't knock every opponent out, and when he faced Ruiz in 2019, his power alone was not enough to keep Ruiz down. Ruiz took Joshua's best shots. Every fighter is different, but we must also consider Joshua's knockout victories over Dillian White and Carlos Takam. When Joshua took on Kevin Johnson in his first real test in the professional ranks, he showed that his power was something that separates him from the rest. Johnson was a boxer who went the distance with the likes of Christian Hammer, Derek Chisora, Vladimir Klitschko, and Tyson Fury. Joshua, however, knocked him out in two rounds. He's taken there. Well, that reputation for durability is well, well deserved, but how much longer can this go on? And it's stopped, it's over, done. So as far as power goes, yes, Joshua has plenty of it. Next up, speed. Joshua's speed is often overshadowed by his knockout power. Joshua is a very large heavyweight. When he's at his optimal weight in fights, he's extremely fluid for a man of his stature. In fights such as the Molina, Ruiz 2, Parker, and Brazil fights, he looks great. He was fast in both the hands and the feet. He will never move like a welterweight, but he doesn't have to. From what we've seen so far and considering his size, Joshua moves fast. 
He's not as fast as Tyson Fury, but he's fast enough to formulate a destructive combination in response to a split-second opening from an opponent. He has a snappy jab, and that's not as common as you might think from a 6'6 heavyweight boxer. However, to measure his speed is somewhat inconsistent. In the first Ruiz fight, he looked rather slow and ponderous, and this is generally the result of being too muscle-bound. Any coach will tell you that a boxer must never have too much muscle. However, when the rematch came around, Joshua had a perfect physique for a boxer. He was lean, and that fight just proved that Joshua's prime, optimal shape is when he's not muscle-bound. So in his prime physical shape, Joshua is certainly fast. He's very quick to the punch, and he's one of the best finishers in the sport when he has an opponent hurt. Following speed, we've got Ring IQ. Ring IQ, or Ring Intelligence, can be defined as the ability, consciously or subconsciously, to create or take advantage of situations in the ring that brings oneself closer to a victory. Joshua has a very underrated ring IQ. A foundational component of Joshua's ring intelligence is his jab. The jab is the cornerstone to any great boxer. Joshua keeps his opponents at a distance with his jab. We saw this especially in the Ruiz rematch. His ring IQ doesn't stop there though. Joshua's got some of the best footwork in the heavyweight division. He's very active with his feet, always moving side to side, and this lateral movement makes sure his opponents can't plant their feet to punch. A boxer has various means to defend an attack. Joshua uses his feet very effectively to evade oncoming attacks. Lateral footwork can also be used to put oneself in a more favorable position in the ring, such as the center. Another layer of defense Joshua utilizes is parrying. Joshua is very good at using parries to deter punches away. There are many ways to parry a punch. Joshua parries down and to the side. Parries can also be used to set up punches. Let's take a look at this fight versus Kevin Johnson. The fight started with Joshua fainting. Watch here as he parries away Johnson's jab. Soon Joshua parried another jab. It's common for boxers to steer the punch away after parrying a body shot. Now watch here, Joshua intentionally paws his right hand out, and Johnson communicates back with a jab. This sequence is what many fans like to call the feeling out process. It's almost like a mutual agreement in the movement of both fighters to test for openings. Watch here as Johnson imitates Joshua by parrying one of his own. Imitation is a common subconscious activity that takes place in the so-called feeling out process. Now watch this. Just not bomb him out of there, break him down bit by bit. Because the record would suggest your ability. There's the first big one. First glance, you wouldn't think much of it, but let's take a closer look. Notice both Joshua and Johnson trying to look for a parry with their right hand. Joshua jabs Johnson's parry, and since imitation is common in the beginning of a fight, there was a high chance Johnson was going to return with a jab as well. Joshua knew this, and instead of parrying Johnson's jab, he slips and counters over with a right hand. Remember that to notice and capitalize on these imitative tendencies is not something a boxer may do consciously. It's something a very educated boxer simply does naturally, and it's often referred to as ring IQ. Another fight where Joshua showed great ring IQ was in the Joseph Parker fight. If we had a heat map of the activity between both fighters in the ring, it would look something like this. Joshua would spend most of his time in the green zone, whereas Parker would spend most of his time in the red zone. Joshua was able to display a boxing masterclass from the center of the ring, always feinting and jabbing Parker to keep him guessing. Joshua also extended his lead arm a lot to interrupt Parker's attacks and keep him at a distance. Joshua held the center of the ring with a consistent jab. Joshua also showed great ring intelligence in the Ruiz rematch. After being defeated before, Joshua avenged a loss by correcting mistakes. The ability to learn is the prerequisite to success. Joshua is a deceptively intelligent boxer. His coach, Robert McCracken, is also very knowledgeable. Joshua's ability to remain humble and learn from mistakes has enabled him to absorb information around him like a sponge. Lastly, we have laudability. Laudability can be defined as how worthy Joshua would be when you take into account the external factors we haven't mentioned yet. 
Of course, world titles come into play. Joshua has three major world titles, the WBA, the WBO, and the IBF. He's also a two-time world champion. He became a champion again after defeating Ruiz in their immediate rematch. It's hard to win a world title, it's even harder to keep one, but it's the hardest to win one back. Joshua's stringent discipline to avenge a loss is often what separates great champions from only good champions. Of all the qualities Joshua has, it's the balanced blend of each one of them that truly makes him a heavyweight king. He has power, but not too much where it sacrifices speed, and not too much speed and power where it sacrifices ring IQ. He's got a bit of everything, and sometimes that will be better than too much of one thing. But in other cases, too much of one thing, say power, is what wins the fight. That's why we have the saying in boxing of styles make fights. You never really know how two styles will mix in the ring until it happens. That's why when we look at the competitors in the heavyweight division, Joshua's standing as the so-called king requires to be tested still by the likes of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. So the question comes, is Anthony Joshua the king of the heavyweight division? It may be too soon to tell. We need to see Fury or Wilder fight Joshua to make any sort of judgment. Fury has a great case, and if not a better case to be called the king of the heavyweight division. However, on the flip side to that coin, Joshua has shown nothing but respect for his duty of being the heavyweight champ, and that calls for great approbation. It's no secret that the big heavyweight fight that grips the attention of the world, especially in Europe, is Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. But until a fight like that happens, all we can do is sit back and speculate of what could be. So what do you think? Do you think Joshua is the current king of the heavyweight division, or is it Tyson Fury? If you'd like us to make a similar video looking at the question of if Tyson Fury is the king of the heavyweight division, let us know in the comments section below. That brings a close to this video. We hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, consider giving it a like as it helps us grow the channel. We'll see you in the next video here on The Fight Game.